All right, today we're going to play through a World Cup of 32 Game of the Year winners, and we are starting with Overwatch and Skyrim. Now, I won't say that both games are good, because only Overwatch is good here, and Elder Scrolls. Skyrim is next level compared to Overwatch, so this should be a no-brainer. Skyrim will win. Now we have Uncharted 4 versus It Takes Two. In my opinion, It Takes Two winning the Game of the Year was one of the biggest upsets in Game Awards that I have ever seen. And compared to Uncharted 4, I don't think It Takes Two is a better game. Why? First, Uncharted 4 has better gameplay than It Takes Two. Now don't go for just simplicity. I like how It Takes Two developers tried something unique and new, but the overall product wasn't the true Game of the Year. I still like this game. I want to say something very clear. I loved Sekiro Combat. There's no doubt about that. But besides that, Breathe of the Wild trumps in all the categories, so it is easily the winner here. Batman Arkham Asylum vs. Fallout 3. Now I believe that there's a difference in the quality of these two games, and the better one is Batman Arkham Asylum. Why? Just play this game, and you'll find out why. The perfect combination of everything. If I have to sum up what I like about this game, you don't expect superhero games to be so cool, but Arkham Asylum is exactly what I'm talking about. Hades vs. Street Fighter 2. A weird comparison, you may say, but these two are the Game of the Year winners, so it's definitely a good comparison. Now which game am I going to choose? I'm going to pick Hades simply because it's a better game. I like Street Fighter 1, the first one. Street Fighter 2 is good too, but if I have to honestly pick a better game, it's definitely Hades. Elden Ring vs. Kickoff. What even is Kickoff? Elden Ring Solos here. Call of Duty 1 vs. Super Mario Galaxy. Now both of these games were not, you could say, unanimous Game of the Year winners. But to pick a better game, I'm going to go with the one that has better replayability value. The game that you can still play compares to others. So, I'm picking Super Mario Galaxy. Witcher 3 vs. Jetpack. Hmm, easiest decision of my life by far. By the way, I want to let you know that all of these matches are completely random. Max Payne vs. Sonic the Hedgehog. Now this is tough, this is definitely tough. I'm a kind of plot and character guy, and Max Payne would win for that reason, but I'm not going to pick Max Payne. Why? Because Sonic is a legendary man. Sonic used to be way more legendary back then. Yeah, it's not that great right now, but just for its legendary status and the impact it had on the gaming industry, I'm picking Sonic the Hedgehog. Now we have GoldenEye007 vs. Vampire Survivors. Hmm, Vampire Survivors for the Game of the Year? That doesn't sound quite right, but GoldenEye007? Now that's a perfect Game of the Year pick. I like this game a lot. This game has that 90s vibe, and the gameplay is still good, especially those gun animations. So I'm picking GoldenEye007. Mass Effect 2 vs. Doom 3. If I had to pick the overall franchise, I would have went for the Doom, but here we are talking about single games. Mass Effect 2 was a true Game of the Year winner, and this game knows how to tell a story without losing direction. I'm not shitting on Doom 3 by any mean, but Mass Effect 2 is what I'm gonna pick. Next up is Ocarina of Time vs Bioshock. This shouldn't be closed one, because Ocarina of Time is like one of the best games ever made. I probably has played Bioshock more. Maybe because of recency bias, but anyone will admit that Ocarina of Time is clearly a better winner. Okay, we have now Duex vs Halo Combat Evolve. Now Xbox fans will hate me forever for what I'm about to do, but with great powers comes great responsibilities, and my responsibility is to pick Duex because it's a damn better game. Just slightly though. I gotta say, Call of Duty 4 and Half-Life 2 are both epic games, but if I had to choose, Call of Duty 4 is my jam, just a bit more than HL2. Call of Duty 4 brings the heat with intense, fast-paced action. You're in these crazy firefights, and it's non-stop adrenaline. Half-Life 2, on the other hand, has this killer story and atmosphere, no doubt, but it's a bit slower. It's like comparing a roller coaster to a sci-fi movie. Both awesome. Next up is Oblivion vs. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. I don't remember which organization gave Tom Clancy the game of the year, but that's alright. Now let's talk about the game. Oblivion has this massive fantasy world you can get lost in. It's like living in a fantasy epic. And the freedom to explore is unreal. Ghost Recon is cool with the military vibes, but Oblivion takes the cake with that immersive fantasy experience. So I'm picking Oblivion. Now for the final matchup for this round. We got Super Mario 64 vs Dark Souls 2. 
Now I'm going to sound insane, but hear me out. Mario 64 is indeed one of the most iconic games ever, but Dark Souls 2 is a better game by a bit of a margin. I can understand that you might not be into this Dark Souls verse, and that's alright. What Dark Souls 2 did, a huge number of games fail to do. So it's my pick here. Okay, the first round is done, and let's start the next one. Batman, Arkham Asylum vs. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. I wasn't expecting a tough matchup like this one, but anyway, let's pick the winner. Arkham Asylum is one of my all-time favorite games, but Breath of the Wild is just better. The adventurous nature of it is hard to replicate, and it has one of the best worlds out there. I don't like characters that much. Now it's Sonic vs. Dark Souls 2. Sonic's a legend, no doubt, but when it comes to overall epicness, Dark Souls 2 inches takes the cake. Sonic's all about that high-speed fun, but DS2 has this intense, dark fantasy world that's just mind-blowing. It's like you're in a never-ending battle, and the challenge is off the charts. So Dark Souls 2 is the better one here. Oblivion vs. Skyrim Now this is poetic. Two Elder Scrolls games going against each other. I don't need to talk much about which game is clearly better. We all know which game has cooler NPCs and cooler gameplay mechanics. That's right, I'm talking about Skyrim. And this is what I'm going to pick. Next up, we have GoldenEye 007 vs Uncharted 4. These two are very different in terms of both time and type. Uncharted 4 is your, let's go to a crazy adventure game, and GoldenEye is your, you are the crazy one who will kill a bunch of people game. The quality of Uncharted 4 is better, because this game tells the complete story, and the Uncharted franchise is known for having epic scenes. Uncharted 4 is my pick. Next up is Super Mario Galaxy vs. Call of Duty, Modern Modern Warfare. Now I have a lot of memories of Code 4 but no Super Mario Galaxy is a slightly better game. If it was Modern Warfare 3, then the contestant would have been different. But the game of the year is Call of Duty 4. So it will lose, and Mario Galaxy will win. Next up is Hades vs. Elden Ring. This is not close at all, at least for me. Elden Ring is clearly going ahead. Props to Hades regardless. Now we have Dux vs Witcher 3. I love classic games, but Witcher 3 is the kind of game you call the best of the best, so there is no doubt that it will win here. The final match of this round is between Ocarina of Time and Mass Effect 2. On one side, we have a game that can be easily put on Mount Rushmore as a role-playing game. The other one can be debated as one of the top 11 games of the decade. I'm picking Ocarina of Time because of how legendary and good this game is. Alright, we are so ready for this round. Starting with Witcher 3 vs Breath of the Wild, this is definitely a primetime matchup. Witcher 3 has a better world and characters, while Breath of the Wild has better mechanics. If we are here talking about overalls, then I'm picking Witcher 3. Now we've got the Ocarina of Time against Skyrim. These Zelda games are wild. The Elder Scrolls had two games in this, but Oblivion is long gone, and what remains is Skyrim. Skyrim is one of the most popular games out there because of the sheer amount of things you can do in it. But do five great runs equal one best run? Now that's a weird analogy, but you get the point. Ocarina of Time is my pick here. Not by a huge difference, though. Super Mario Galaxy vs Elden Ring. Now, I'm not going to insult Mario Galaxy here. I'm giving a clean and respectful victory to Elden Ring. Next up is Uncharted 4 vs Dark Souls 2. I did not expect this matchup, but it's going to be fun to pick the better one. Uncharted 4 was like one of the defining games for the PlayStation 4, and Sony marketed it like hell. It was definitely the best game in the Uncharted franchise. On the other hand, Dark Souls is one of the best games in its genre. Dark Souls nailed the gameplay and OST aspects by far. I'm picking it up here. Finally, we are here for the semi-final round. We are starting with Elden Ring and Dark Souls 2. Two games that seem very close, but are definitely not. I'm done with stupid comparisons but I'm going to throw in one last one. What I believe is that Elden Ring took everything good that Dark Souls had to the next level. And it's mind-blowing how well they did it. The lore, too, is deeper than I thought it would be. So the Elder Ring is my pick here. Ocarina of Time vs Witcher 3. Two legendary games are colliding. Ocarina of Time is for sure outdated, but I don't believe in this stuff. Art can be timeless if it's good enough, but Witcher 3 is still a better game. It won more Game of the Year awards, too, but that's not my reason. My reason is better characters, a slightly better world, and combat that makes you enjoy it. I'm picking Witcher 3. Alright, we are all set for the final of the World Cup. This is going to be tough and fun at the same time.
there isn't much difference, and I absolutely love both of these games. I'm not going to make any wild comparisons anymore and I'm going to come straight to the point. Elden Ring is the better game. I enjoy both games equally, maybe Witcher 3 slightly more. But Elden Ring is a game of its own kind. There are simply no limitations whatsoever. Elden Ring is the best of the best, meaning it's better than all the games of the year we had on this list. So we are done with this World Cup, and let me know in the comments who you think should have won this World Cup. I'm going to see you in the next. Until then, take care.